Okay, today I'm having a download that is blowing my mind. It's been coming for quite a while, but I just got more clarity and so I wanted to, to voice it and share it. Okay, so this concept that I'm seeing is that all information exists. All information exists simultaneously in every moment on planet Earth, um, whether we're in contact with it or not. So say somebody wants to, um, okay, say somebody has muscle, real, like sore muscles, they're very tight, tight, sore, achy muscles, um, and they might not be aware of much more than that, <laughs> much more than, boy, ah, oh, my leg and my thigh is so achy and stiff and, uh, oh, it just doesn't feel good and I can't get it to feel good. And they might not be aware of much more than the presence of that. So, but out there in the world, there is knowledge and information about muscles and about muscle tissue, including that there are a lot of different massage techniques that um, sore muscles often and tight muscles often include um, adhesions in the fascia and in the connective tissue and um, that make the muscle fibers so that they, they can't slide past each other very well. It makes them sticky and actually stuck and stiff. And so instead of, and also same thing with their ability to lengthen, stretch and uh, recoil, if there's a lot of adhesions and stickiness, then their ability to reach that full length and movement can be restricted as well. And that there are a lot of different massage techniques that can help um, break up those adhesions and help um, bring more fluidity back into the fascia. And there's also cranial sacral or um, energy work, energy modalities that can help trans transition the tissue and change the tissue, um, as well as heating and stretching. And there's all kinds of information, knowledge about and information about things that can change the muscle tissue, also nutritionally, internally, hydration. There's all kinds of things. So they all exist out there. So I'm kind of, I get the visual of um, a person, a person and their energy field or their aura is a bubble around them of energy. And within their physical body, they've got lots of cells and the cells all have, um, are downloaded with um, information of how to function and how to do their jobs and what jobs to do. Um, also, um, emotionally and mentally, their information has a record of every moment of their life, of their existence, every single moment. It's in little file folders. <laughs> that is how I see it um, in their mind. And then their energy field is where I like to view all of their data being held. And that might not be correct, but that's just how I, I, how I picture it. So every moment of their life, where they've lived, say they lived in Kansas, um, what the temperature was like, or what the weather was like, what it looked like, what kind of plants grew there, um, what the atmosphere and the culture felt like there, what kinds of experiences they had there, what their house was like growing up, their family members, all of that information about what it was like to live in Kansas recorded in their subconscious mind or their energy field. Um, all of it, every single second. Um, say they played soccer, um, they had experiences chasing the ball, getting hit by the ball, and maneuvering with the ball in different ways. Um, the experiences they had of what it was like to be a eight-year-old playing with other teammates and um, and then as they learned the different rules. All of those experiences um, recorded in file folders in their system. But if they've never lived in um, Maine, um, then they don't have any info, data, about what living in Maine can be like in their energy field. If they met someone who has lived in Maine, then um, they can glean some kind of data, even though it's, um, it can be through perception or through projection, some kind of data about what it was like to listen to someone talk about what it was like for them to live in Maine. They can record that. If they heard that Maine snows a lot, record that data, that it um, the snow got up higher than their door frame recorded the data so they can um what information is currently housed in our personal energy field in my energy field in my system 
includes anything I've ever experienced, either through watching, like experiences of watching someone else have an experience or me having an experience, um, is all recorded here. And also our brain, um, it brings in, we're actually receiving a lot of data at all times. Right now, your system is receiving a lot of sensory data of everything you can see, not just directly in front of you, but your peripheral vision as well. The colors and the textures, the objects, even without looking at them, your system is picking up that sensory info. Um, also the temperature of the room right now, or wherever you're at, the temperature, if there's a slight breeze, your um, sensory input is picking up on that. Um, also touch, where your clothing is touching your skin and where it's not touching your skin, how tight it is, what the texture is, is it rough, is it kind of scratchy, is it soft, is it applying pressure, is it really loose and not applying pressure. Also what you're sitting on, the pressure of where your body's in contact with the floor or with the chair. Um, that, that's a lot of information as well. Also smells, all smells that are existing in your moment right now, any tastes, um, also internal sensations, um, emotions. There's a lot of information that's happening right now that your brain and your system is taking in, but it's not bringing it all to the conscious level because that would be overwhelming to be consciously experiencing everything that's happening, but it's still coming in, your brain is still um, experiencing it and recording it and it's still going into your file folders, even stuff that you weren't consciously focused on. Okay, so that's a ton of data. That's a lot of information. Um, okay, so how to transition now. So what's cool is that um, when my energy field comes in contact with another person, um, either it could be physical contact and our energy fields overlap, it could be talking on the phone. It could be watching them on YouTube. <laughs> there you go. On um, In any way, or it could be reading their book. Um, what I find, and you can listen into your own system to, to see how this feels to you, um, that I can start consciously experiencing a lot of things because of our contact. If a friend calls me on the phone and we're talking and they share an experience about... Um, an experience that they had in their life of what it was like to live in Maine or whatever the experience is, um, I am, I can start gaining a lot more input or data in my system by talking to them, by talking to them, um, just hearing their emotions of what they, what it felt like, what emotions come up for them when they talk about what it was like to live in Maine, the data um, information about what it was like to live in Maine what is happening inside of me when I hear them talking about living in Maine. Now I might say, oh, that's so cold. Or, wow, so much space and um, small towns. That feels so welcoming to me. Or, so anyway, there's a lot of, inf there's a lot of things happening just at a conscious level um, of us talking, but also on an energetic level. I do personally believe that there's, that some type of energetic connection happens almost as if my energetic eyes open and can see their all of their energy as if um, what's that if all their file folders were open and showing pictures of what was in each file folder and the data of what was in each file folder if that was just totally opened up and I could see all of it while engaging with them then any files that I don't have I could see and and learn about almost like watching a TV show like an episode on the Discovery Channel about all these different topics and experiences. I have never been skydiving. What was that like? I've never, um, if, I, if I'm a single child and if I've never had a brother, I'm like, oh, they have a file on what it was like to have a brother. What is that like? Um, then there's a lot that I can be gaining just from coming in contact with them and what is in their, their file folders that's not in mine. Or even what is the same and I can compare of, if we both grew up in, in if we both um, have three brothers, I could compare their file folder of what it was like for them to have three brothers and mine and g gain a lot of new perspectives and information um, of like, oh, I didn't realize it could be different for someone or those certain things are in common. That's interesting. Anyway, so I do believe at an energetic level that that happens on some to some degree when we interact with another person. So I can be adding a lot to information and experience to my file folders by talking with someone. Now what's 
really okay no we'll get to that later okay so um, every person I like to describe it this way every person on the planet is looking through the lens of their data so the, the experiences they've had the information they're carrying around in their data in their file folders directly relates how the world looks to them if they grew up in s Russia or somewhere really north where it's um, or in Alaska where it's dark for a lot of the time during certain seasons and then light for a long time during other seasons then them moving somewhere visiting somewhere where that doesn't happen where like Costa Rica or along the equator where it stays kind of the same all the time that, that they're gonna notice that like wow this is different like the time the daylight and the seasons are the same or the daylight's the same year-round that's very different than what I've experienced and they can have some contrast of um, wow this is different when it's dark a lot during certain seasons you can have these types of experiences that will not and don't happen here at the equator um, and vice versa when it's the same daylight year-round you can have certain experiences that you can't have uh, that don't exist in other in the other place um, okay but also our beliefs if we believe um, okay I'm not gonna give an example but our beliefs um, are unique to us in that this person doesn't have all the same file folders of beliefs that I do and if we believe that our beliefs are true <laughs> then that's we're gonna believe what I believe reality is and what they believe reality is is gonna be different because everyone's seeing it through their different lens so basically you could say nobody sees reality no one is seeing the true reality because everyone is looking at it through their own lenses okay um, but I find personally that adding more data to my file holders makes me more capable of seeing more and helps me get closer to seeing reality okay another thing that's interesting with um, the data in our file folders and what we experience um, are we could have inherited um, data there's a really cool experiment with mice well not cool for them but we can observe things where they had a, um, a maze that the mouse would go through to get to a treat at the end and they did the maze the mouse learned it, it was great and then they put um, a, something at around one corner that the sh mouse would receive a shock when it stepped on it as it was going around the corner to continue its maze and it stayed there consistently for a while um, that whenever the mouse turned this corner they'd get a shock they removed that and then they had the mice's children do the maze and the mice's children when they got to that corner would freeze and would have a reaction as if they knew that there can be a shock at that corner even though they never experienced it themselves so it's trans so we can be gain DNA uh, memories in our DNA DNA is, some, is one way to describe it um, we can inherit data from other people's experience who came before us that we haven't even experienced um, which is kind of common people's reaction to snakes or to um, infections on the skin all kinds of things can come from their ancestral DNA memory of that color of snake is dangerous or boils of that type on the skin is indicative of of a deadly plague or something so people can have um, experience um, and DNA memory so they can have data in their energy field that wasn't even from their life um, so there's actually a lot there's a lot of data going on here okay all right so that's all that was all talking about our energy field and our the data that we are carrying around so if I um, if I can add to that by reading books by um, and even if uh, so say someone spends has experiences what it's like to live in a log cabin that they built with their own hands and they live in it for 50 years and then they write a book about what it was like to live in a log cabin I can read that book and what's cool is it could take them their whole like 30 years to experience it five or ten years to write the book and I can read the book in like a week or a month however long it is and I can gain access to all that information like so quickly so if I read their book I might not glean all of the details of what it was like fully what it was like for them for 30 years to live in a log cabin 
but I can have a lot. I can glean a lot of data and information and add it to myself, add it to my um, file folders. So, so if a person um, lives in a cave <laughs> their whole life and they really don't ever talk with another person or maybe only two people, um, they never read books, they never leave the cave, the amount of data in their, um, in their, in their file folders is gonna be pretty small versus someone who um, reads a bunch of books, um, talks to a bunch of people, has a lot of relationships, has a lot of experiences, um, travels around, um, or is and and or is very mindful and observant because you can be kind of um, consciously numb while living, while doing things, while going places, um, and your subconscious will still pick up on all the sensory data that it was around and saw, but uh, we won't have as maybe as many epiphanies or new thoughts, new beliefs, new perspectives um, come to us through that experience as it as it can when we're conscious. Okay, then that will all, that person will have a lot more data in their file folders. Okay, this is, okay, now we're gonna get into the really exciting stuff, the really fun stuff. Oh, okay, so I see it this way. Um, let's just look at one person again. Okay, so this is a person and this is their file folder of all of their experience. And this is also the space around them at least immediately around their body. And we can also imagine that the space around them, the room they're in, the city they're in, the location they're at, that's got a lot of information in it too. Um, right now I'm looking out the window, there are leaves that have turned red, there are leaves that stay green, there's a palm tree, um, there's a dead tree. There's the presence of many, multiple things in the space I'm around, but the the presence of the space immediately around me doesn't include species that only exist in another country. So there's a lot that it doesn't include. Um, so if I can expand, so we'll make this space, the rest of the space around um, the person is the rest of the earth, the whole planet. Um, so on this planet, there exists, like over here, um, a tree species that doesn't exist immediately around me. And over here, there's another one, another one, another one. And they exist on the planet that I'm on, but not in my immediate um, surroundings. And if I haven't ever what, studied, um, looked at pictures on, online, watched a documentary about, heard someone describe their experience of the certain tree species, then it doesn't exist yet in my in my file folders, um, but it, it does exist on the planet around me, and I could gain information about it and experience of it in a variety of ways that would then add it to my file folders. So I could watch a documentary about it, this specific tree species. I could um, read a Facebook post from someone who is growing that tree or has an experience with that tree. I could um, there's a whole bunch of ways. I could also, um, meditate and for, if, if it was expedient, if it was needed, it's also possible that I could energetically, um, plug into that tree species information data and vision and see it, um, and become conscious of and aware of and experience that tree that way. That's very less common, but it is, it does exist. It is possible. Okay, so the same thing is true with all information. So say this person, their muscles are sore in their leg and they're tight and they're stiff and they're restricted and they don't, that's all they know about it. They don't know methods or they don't know what contributes to muscle tissue getting tight and stiff and, and restricted. And they don't know any information about ways to undo that. But that information does exist on the planet. Um, there's information about um, heating the muscle, the impact that heat has on restricted muscles, the impact that lots of different massage techniques have different impacts on restricted muscles, different energy modalities and techniques, um, stretching, um, activating other muscles that are nearby. There's um, the fascia. There's like so much, there's so much information that exists about muscle tissue that this person may not be in contact with. But there's a lot of 
so they don't yet know what they don't know, right? They don't know how much information exists um, or what the capabilities of information that's out there are. They don't know that there are a few pieces of information that can make their muscle restriction change and be gone within 20 minutes. <laughs> like, that's so fast. Or there's other pieces of information about how to make the muscle, re that could make the muscle restriction um, change and disappear within three weeks. There's just, so they don't have any uh, awareness of how much information there is, what the different pieces of information are, what the impact of having that knowledge would or that experience going to that massage therapist or receiving that massage technique or doing a hot sauna or a dry sauna um, or doing this stretch or that stretch or this exercise. They don't have any of that, but it does exist and they can get access to it in a variety of ways. They could Google, <laughs> or maybe not Google, they could look up online um, any information and start coming in contact with some of these pieces. They could talk to someone, they could rub shoulders with someone in the grocery store line that's a massage therapist or that's an energy worker or that um, is a kinesiologist um, or a chiropractor or any of these things and gain access to some of this information that way. Um, or, so they're, or they could um, go to the, whoever they go to so far for help with their health and, their, and that person could tell them about Oh, like, oh, did you know I have a pamphlet on 20 different ways to impact muscle tissue? Here you go. Or I can refer you to someone to go talk to and they will tell you what they know about muscle tissue. Um, or they could be at the bookstore and happen to see a book. Or there's a lot of different ways they could gain access to these things. So what's cool is um, sending your awareness somewhere will open the door for that. So if they say, if they just look at their leg and they're like, my leg hurts, and that's all they do, their awareness is on, hey, that hurts. Ugh, it hurts. Can't bend my knee very far. It hurts. It's hurting. It's hurting like this. It's hurting like that. Going up the stairs hurts it more. And their awareness stays only on um, the pain then their awareness will stay only on the pain. <laughs> but they can send their awareness outside of that. So instead of just focusing it right there, they could send their awareness out pff, bigger, somewhere else, to a different place than just the location of their leg. And um, doing so, so one of my favorite ways to do that is to ask a question. Questions go directly to the subconscious and the subconscious or your energy field will start, it's almost like your energy field starts looking around. I'm like, I don't know, like, let's look for the answer. So you can ask a question, um, what would it take for my leg to feel supple and happy and comfortable and strong? And the subconscious mind will start going through all of your file folders in your system of looking. I'm like, do we have any file folders on how to make, how? Um, what legs are like when they're in their proper state, when they're happy. And we'll start looking around. And if you've got any sen sentences in any of your file folders, and even in other topics that mention or have anything to do with um, legs working properly, feeling good, tissue, like getting rid of pain, um, it'll come to, it'll pop up. It's almost like your system like pulls up a report. Like this is what we found when we searched our files. Here you go. Um, and also, so that will happen, and that can happen pretty instantly, especially if you practice it, of, oh, hey, you know, I remember my neighbor when I was 15 years old said um, that they did some type of body work. I don't know what body work is, but I remember them mentioning stretching and tissue tightness and restriction. Hey, that's an idea. I wonder if I could call my old, that old neighbor and ask them to tell me more. Or I remember they said body work. I could look up online, what is body work? What does that mean? Um, so it can start bringing up um, information. Also, what's cool is when you ask that question of, hey, what would it take for my leg to feel great? <laughs> and for whatever's happening in it that's causing this discomfort and these issues um, to resolve. You can send that out to the whole universe, to the whole planet. Um, 
and then guess what happens? You can be directed to that, to that stuff. You can say, hey, energy of the whole universe, what would it take for that to feel better? And then you, and then on over the next, during that day immediately, or during that day or the week or however long it takes, you can be, it kind of like magnetizes you, where like you'll, um, things will come up for you and you'll get in contact with some of this other information. So ask and receive is real, it's totally real. Um, and it can even come to you just through a download. So like you can either ask that question and then your system becomes magnetized to this piece of information and you do brush shoulders with someone at the grocery store two hours from now when you go to the grocery store and they mention and you say, and you're t get talking and they mention that they're a massage therapist um, or they're a body worker or, um, or you um, happen to have Amazon recommend books for you and there's one about um, the human body and muscle health or something. Or you can even just receive a download directly of, some people do, they receive like words of like the name of a person and they're like, oh, I've never heard of that person before and they look it up and they're like, oh, they are, you know, a practitioner who helps the body. Um, or um, you can have information that wasn't inside your field um, come to you, just like arrive to you either Im immediately in your mind or through events um, to gain access to other information. But what's interesting is that when our awareness is not directing and welcoming, like like it's when our focus is in inward of like ah my leg ouch 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 ouch, our all of our awareness is pointed right here. But when we open our awareness. Um, it changes things. So when we're focused solely on this thing, it almost like closes the door so that any outside information can't come in and any other file folders that have data that could help us won't get pulled up because we're not asking for a search. We're not doing a search of our file folders. We're just looking at something. But we can even look at our leg with awareness and say, oh, ouch, okay, so I noticed that there's um, pain and I can even tune in and hear where the pain is located and like delineate it, like what space has pain in it, what space doesn't have pain in it. And we can use awareness this way as well, but by choosing, so it's all just choice. We can choose and say, okay, okay, noting, I am noting that the pain exists. And at the same time, I'm also gonna have an openness of, um, okay, tell me more. Tell me any information I need to know, pain, anything that you want to say to me. And I'm simultaneously asking my system, what is needed here? What would the solution be? What is the need? There's a need that exists, apparently. What would meet that need? And do I need to understand the need more before it's ready to be met? Um, so even while focusing there, I can still expand my awareness and send my awareness to go find answers for me. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so this might seem, um, I don't know if that seemed confusing or if that um, made a lot of sense, but what's really mind-blowing about this is that that was just a story about muscle aches, but this situation exists for everything, everything. In fact, whatever we are, okay, so here's, here's the take-home message. Where we choose to send our awareness creates and dictates our current experience and also dictates our direction of where we're gonna go in the next moment. And the reason being, that person could choose to just keep, to zero in and send their awareness to only to their limb, leg pain and not send it anywhere else and they will experience leg pain and they will probably just keep experiencing it <laughs> because um, the likelihood of it resolving or changing isn't likely, nothing's likely to happen if they're just only zooming in and sending their awareness to that it hurts without also adding um, a question of why do you hurt or 
I'm opening my mind um, to hear or receive more information about um, what caused the pain, what does the pain mean, what does the pain need, if they send their awareness only to, hey, ouch, this sucks that I have pain, then it kind of closes the door on every, like, it closes the door in every other direction. Um, but if they choose, which is what they're inside their mind, to send their awareness elsewhere of anything, <laughs> it can be anything. You can, okay, so we'll, we'll do an experiment right now. We'll just do it right, do it right now. All right, so while we're here, Become aware of where clothing is touching your skin. Become aware of your feet. Become aware of anything touching your feet and where your feet are touching air. Become aware of um, the pressure of what you're sitting on. Become aware of the area of your hips and thighs that are experiencing pressure from sitting in the areas that are not. Become aware of your tongue position and where your tongue, what part of your tongue is touching the roof of your mouth and what parts are not, or if it's not at all. Take a deep breath, take several deep breaths and become aware of where movement is happening as your, uh, your torso inflates and deflates. Become aware of anywhere where there's a stretch during the breath, any tissues internally or near your skin that are stretching during the breath. You can even squeeze your anus and relax it. Become aware of those muscles. You can blow out all of your air hard like you're blowing out birthday candles and be aware of your abdominal muscles and what they do during that experience. <sighs> Become aware of your jaw. Are your teeth touching each other? Are they spaced? Are they touching each other hard? Become aware of your face. Can you relax it more? Was there tense tension in any of the muscles? Become aware of um, the texture of the wall in front of you. Zoom in and look at just one spot. Become aware of what that spot looks like, the texture of it. Become aware of your muscle, eye muscles, and how they, in, they increase contraction in order to do that. Now broaden your vision, become aware of your peripheral vision. You can even hold your hands out and wiggle them on either side. Become aware of how your, your vision gets fuzzy a little bit to do that, and how your eyeball muscles relax when they go broad versus narrow and focused. So there's all, you can do that with a lot of things. You can do that with anywhere you send your awareness in your own system, it'll zoom in and you'll become consciously experiencing what is there. And this can even be done at a very deep level with your organs and with your internal muscles. You can increase your skill and practice to the point that you can become aware of your liver, of your colon, it's very advanced, but you can do it. You can also eat food and follow it through your body. Eat one bite and then you can follow it. Be aware of the movement of it through your body. Um, you can become aware of your file folders, of a memory. You can, even if it's not a specific memory, you can become aware of um, what the feelings, what it felt like to be 10 years old. And your system, your awareness will go there. It'll it will tune in to that and you'll become more aware than you were a minute ago of what it felt like for you to be 10 years old. So all this data and information exists and just wherever you send your awareness, it'll like surface it. You'll tune in to that information and you'll experience it consciously when you weren't experiencing it very consciously before. Okay, so that can happen with anything that belongs to your system. You can even, Become aware of, is there, um, show me an inherited um, ancestral belief that is in my energy system and it's there because I got it through my um, DNA and energy transfer at conception or by being a part of this family line. 
and you can it takes all these things take skill and you can increase the skill um, so the same thing can happen with one experience so someone say someone has the experience of um, they all of their money has been spent they have $50 in their account a lot of things exist so say um, say an, someone they know had offered them a job said like hey if you ever are interested um, in this type of work I have a job that I would be happy for you I would prefer you to be the one who works in that job but I can fill it with someone else um, or um, the neighbor needs help cutting down their tree and they mention that They're like yeah I'm gonna need to cut down my tree in the next year and I'll need help doing doing so um, or say they the person has a lot of um, they've collected a collection of something of art or of something or other and they thought oh yeah I could sell that if I ever wanted to it would take some work of putting together an Etsy shop um, but that's a possibility I could do that so say this person is in the moment is in an experience where they have $50 left in their account they paid their bills for this month they have $50 left where they send their awareness will change will determine will change how what they experience if they zoom in and say $50 that's only enough to buy this much food that's um, what if I get um, what if I made a check for something that didn't go through yet and it goes through right now that could the $50 could disappear um, they could so there's a lot that can be experienced by looking at the $50 and if they only look at that it'll close the door on all the other data that does exist on planet Earth right now um, the data that exists in their energy field of Bob next door said he'd want help cutting down or he needs help cutting down his tree sometime and he'd be willing to pay for that um, Jared offered me a job doing that thing um, and the job probably and the offer probably still stands um, I could um, upload my art collection that I wanted to sell at some point onto Etsy I could open my Etsy shop probably within 30 minutes <laughs> Like all that information exists in their energy field, but if they send their awareness only pinpointed on that $50 and the lack and fear, and they could send their awareness anywhere they want to. And if they send it only there, then that's gonna be what they currently, in the current moment, are experiencing. And the other stuff exists, but they're not experiencing it. If they send their, start sending their awareness, that they start opening up and saying, okay, I also wanna send my awareness to what are my options? What could be done about this? Is there a way where more other money could flow into that account and sit next to that $50 ever? Or like in the next day or in the next month, in the next week, in the next day, in the next hour? Are there any possibilities where that could happen? And if there are, what are they? What would it take for more money to flow in in the next hour? And if they send their awareness to those places, then it'll open up their system to looking around and start seeing, like within their own energy field, looking around, oh yeah, Bob next door said it would take probably about three days to cut down that tree, and he wanted to do it sometime in the next six months. So that, if technically, if I called him up right now, there's a chance that he would say, I have to have free time for the next three days. <laughs> or or my, my nephew's here, and my nephew, two, two people would be able to do the job. Um, and my nephew would be open to it. And in three days from now, you can have money in the account. Um, or you could pay at the end of each day for the work. So the end of the day. Um, awareness could go, and as the awareness is expanded within our own energy field, it could go, oh yeah, um, I could probably watch a tutorial on how to open an Etsy shop. Um, here's one. Oh, it's only 30 minutes long. 30 minutes from now, I could know how to open an Etsy shop. And maybe it takes two hours. To like totally get it all set up and already have loaded 10 vi pictures of 10 of my art collection who knows something so then that could be two and a half hours from now um, someone could have seen it and and ordered something so but then if we keep if we intend for our awareness to go even bigger to the whole universe and we ask the whole universe, hey, the whole universe and all the data and information that exists that I may be in contact with on some level or I'm not in contact with yet, 
um, what possibilities exist and please bring that please show me then all kinds of there's there's like endless ways where money could flow to them they're so so, so like we couldn't even list them all and if they open so if they open their awareness just to their energy field they'll start getting answers from their file folders and if they open even bigger a little bit bigger or a little bit bigger a little bit bigger they can gain access to endless possibilities basically <sighs> so that's my message today and there's more to it but that's as much that's kind of the gist of it that literally in every moment we have the choice we have a choice to send our awareness somewhere um, if we're kind of an autopilot our awareness will likely be our physical surroundings that wall is brick that dresser is brown the floor has um, tan carpet it's a little bit on the chilly side temperature wise um, I see tasks that need to get done that laundry needs to get folded the beds made a little crooked um, the dishes there's some dishes that haven't been put away like whatever is currently around us but at any moment we can send our awareness elsewhere um, we can remember um, ex like experiences we've had um, or especially miracles that's a common one in scripture remember 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 um, the miracles that have happened remember the possibilities of different ways that things can happen that weren't that people didn't previously know or that the person in the story didn't previously know until they opened their awareness asked for a miracle and eventually it came in some format and they experienced a solution that they previously didn't know existed because it wasn't within their their file folders but we can gain we can so if we choose to send our awareness in every moment of the day to um, lack to any lack that exists around us so the glass is half full the glass is half full that person cried for a minute that's not okay um, if I listen in I bet I can find some pain somewhere in my body yeah it's a little bit tight right here um, that's dirty that's broken that's not enough then our file folder can just be full and so full of lots of awareness of where lack can exist and has existed and where we saw it at the same time lack and abundance coexist in every minute all the time um, gratitude and lack exist coexist in every minute uh, joy and pain everything that exists is always existing in every minute um, and we can plug into it through a variety of ways so say I want to plug into um, the feeling of feeling peaceful I can walk outside and experience my the plants around me I can pull up a memory pull up a memory of, of time in a place I felt peaceful I can think of um, I can send my awareness through thinking of um, concepts or principles that bring a feeling of peace I can uh, meditate on my breath just be aware of my breath and breathe deeply so that my nervous system settles down into um, rest and digest or on a parasympathetic tone and my physical body can feel peaceful I can look up documentaries about um, events and experiences that um, are peace inducing I can watch a gardening TV show and watch the plants grow and watch them get nourished and feel peaceful about that I can I have so many options a lot of them just through memory or a lot of them through imagining concepts like connecting to a concept um, plugging into the reality that the Sun light is sustaining the life of everything on earth <laughs> that there's innumerable bacteria that live in the soil that are producing everything that grows <laughs> all plants feed off of the bacteria um, and those bacteria are existing in abundance providing life um, there's just so many concepts that I could just choose to plug into at any moment to experience um, the awareness of that information that exists um, I can so that's why a lot of people say like whenever you're feeling a little stressed or sad review like list 10 things you're grateful for 
um, review your identity, that you are a powerful, important being with massive potential and the opportunity right now by being alive to experience um, innumerable experiences that add to yourself and can help your, your soul grow. Like there's just so many things, it's beyond words. So we have the option and every minute through our agency, through our choice, to send our awareness anywhere we want to. And when we do that, we open and close the doors on what we, are, we currently have access to. So all of this exists all the time. And we choose, we basically choose what we experience by um, what we send our awareness to. And then also by sending our awareness to what does it feel like in my hips, in my legs to move? I'm gonna tune into that. I'm gonna stretch and kind of dance and I'm gonna move and feel, wow, that feels cool. That feels good. The joints have this like happy feeling when they move, especially when they move through a big range of motion. Um, I am becoming more aware of that. Maybe that was the first time in my whole life that I tuned in and felt like, wow, that feels good. And then what if for the ne every day for the next month, I intentionally moved and moved in ways that really used my legs. I climbed upstairs, I climbed on rocks, I did a grapevine, I walked sideways, I danced. I'd be adding to my file folder more and more and more and more connection and knowledge and experience of how good it feels for legs to move. So we can choose with our agency to become a, to send our awareness out to more. We can choose to send it anywhere we want. We can also choose to bring, to make choices, to choose to experience things, to build up the number of times we've experienced that experience and, and build our file folders. And we can also clean out our file folders. So if we have a file, we have a lot of file folders about lack, about there's not enough, about doom, etc., and only one file folder about um, abundance and about um, joy and capability and the ability to expand. We, as souls, have the ability to expand or grow and um, evolve endlessly. And there's even if you get held in a dungeon, you you can keep expanding. That can no one can ever stop that. So you can always keep expanding, and um, we choose if we do that or not, and we choose how, like, what we add to ourselves. So if we have a huge file folder, like a whole filing cabinet about lack and pain and um, and stuff like that, we only have one file about, hey, miracles can happen. Hey, I can experience um, the warmth of the sunlight or a memory of the warmth of the sunlight every day if I want to. Um, wow, there's so much that's possible. We can choose to clear these out, or at least clear out the weight of them. We might, we'll still have the memory. Our system will still retain the memory that at, you know, age 45 or 60 or 20, we had, we felt what it was like to have a huge file, filing cabinet full of lack files, and we gleaned, like, that experience, that experience is recorded. But we can choose to, through sending our awareness places, to release things and choose what is being held with us at all times. Okay, so I need to say that differently. The experience, any experience we've ever gone through, that will be recorded. Um, the weight can be added to any experience. And weight, the weight can pull us, pull our awareness towards it. And we can release the weight off of everything inside of us. So whatever we went through in life will be still recorded, but there doesn't have to be any weight to it. And by, so any traumatic experience or any painful experience, we experience lack, you can release the weight of it um, so it doesn't pull you towards it. But your system still retains knowledge that it gained from the experience. And you can also add weight or add um, strength or size to the positive and the nourishing and uplifting and um, encouraging um, data in your file folder by repetition, by experiencing it more. So if I chose every day for a year to wake up and think about things I'm grateful for and feel gratitude in my body, I would be increasing 
increasing those things in a file folder on what it feels like to feel gratitude would be get bigger and bigger and bigger and would have more it would be stronger okay and so that's what I do in my practice I help people um, be aware become aware that they can ch their choice and their agency is crazy powerful and I help them release the weight from stuff and add in um, nutritious things so that they are, their awareness and their capability of experiencing nutritious and happy and expanding and growth and abundance increases because they open the door. We are the ones that totally are in control of like not opening the door or not. Oh, okay, there you go. Enjoy. Um, and I love to talk about this kind of stuff. So if you have any um, questions or comments, you can always email um, or message me. Um, and what's cool is that you listening to this by, so when we're listening to someone talk about a topic, our system is automatically reaching out and can plugging into the, the energy of that topic and we're downloading information. And we might be downloading a lot of other information that hasn't been said here, but that is involved in that topic. So as you're watching, you might have had a lot of downloads of information I didn't say, and even information that I don't know or I haven't gotten in contact with yet. And that's the joy of, of synergy, of connecting with people. If multiple people come together, two people, they are gonna be getting in contact with probably different pieces of information. Like one person will be getting in contact with that piece, one person, and then they can say it together. Of like, hey, that just brought up this idea for me, or I'm seeing this concept right now or that's reminding me of this experience that went like this. And then they can both add that information. When they say it out loud to each other, it now becomes accessible to the other person. Now both people are accessible, have access to everything that was acquired by anyone. So, and I love that. <laughs> I love that so much. It increases how, what information and how much information is inside my file folder when I get to experience what other people experienced listening to me and vice versa. So if you have any thoughts on the topic, if you had any awarenesses come to mind and you want to share them, I love that. I will definitely always celebrate and um, enjoy sharing information back and forth. So feel free to, to send it over if you want to. All right. Happy expanding and playing with and experimenting with how and when and where we can send our awareness. And also a recap that asking, just asking the question, um, I wonder what could be possible here. So if the person's looking at the, they have an experience where they, their bank account pulls up and they see $50, they can say, I wonder what is possible. I wonder, I wonder, so saying I wonder what can be possible does that expansion thing. Also asking the question of something we want of like, so that open, I wonder what's possible, opens our system to gain, be able to have more access to all these things that are possible. And if there's a specifically one that we want, of I want $200 in my account by the end of the day, or I want um, $5,000 in my account by the end of the month, a specific thing, then that will, help, that will also target. So if we say, oh, I wonder what can be possible here. Possible how I can experience this, looking at this right now, there's a whole bunch of options of how we can experience it of what's possible there. Um, but then also what's possible of how to um, move into more money flow, experience more money flow. And then also directly what's possible. I wonder what it would take um, to feel um, hopeful right now. I wonder what it would take to um, have, say, the bills in the next two weeks are $1,500 or something. I wonder what it would take to have $1,500 flow to me by next Friday. Or I wonder what it would take to have $5,000 in my account by the end of the month. Um, giving specifics also opens you up to receiving the information of the solutions for those specifics. So, ah, all right, have fun, have fun guys. <laughs>